Hello everyone and welcome back to China Camp. This uh, window uh, towards the Chinese Chinese culture and tradition. Today we will only speak English because we have our guest <laughs> Cora Dao. Thank you for being here, and it's a pleasure for us to have you here today. Thank you. And we've been to your concert yesterday, and let me tell you that was amazing. I won't pretend to be a music expert, but even for those ones who don't understand anything about music, that was amazing, really. Even because Cora did very, very young, right? Yes, I, I well, I guess. I mean, <laughs> I I am my own age, so I don't. It's always hard to know, but yes, I'm 23. So it's it's amazing, really, oh, and it's amazing also your experience with music because actually you've been playing and composing for uh, some of the most important um, theaters and companies, and this is actually your second time here in Italy because the first time you've been to Milan, right? Yes, I've actually been to Italy a few times over the years. The very first time was like 12 years ago. Yes, I played uh, some recitals in uh, Lecce. Oh, okay. And uh, and I've worked uh, in 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 Milan, as you said, and also in Rome with Santa Cecilia, and so it's 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 great to be back. It's great to be back, and yet I still don't speak Italian. I guess as an, okay. as, an, as an ignorant American. <laughs> no, but it's okay. But the fact that you're coming back it means that you like Italy. Right? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> okay, perfect. So I will ask ask you a few questions mm -hmm. about your life and your music. And totally. my first question is. How and why your uh, uh, passion for music started? So I don't remember starting. I started when I was very, very young. I started playing the piano when I was about 18 months old. Wow. Um, and the only reason I know that is we have VHS tapes that, are, that okay. have dates on them. Because um, I don't remember. I don't remember starting. I, the first thing I ever played at the piano were like nursery tunes. Mm -hmm. uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb, that was the yeah. first thing. <laughs> And it was just by ear. Mm -hmm. So I think actually it's not that different from discovering any kind of vocabulary or language. Mm -hmm. um, just hearing it and hearing sound and hearing something that seemed to have meaning. Yeah, sure. And then dis trying to discover what that meant, uh, how I could communicate in that vocabulary, and just trying to discover it. And then I started writing music very soon after. I started trying to improvise and making my uh, I tried making my own melodies and I I don't know why <laughs> I still don't know why but I think there just must have been some eagerness sure. to communicate in that sure. way and and then it went it rolled out of control pretty fast mm. and I started studying more seriously and then and now here we are I it's it's it really just kind of started from there but actually, by this situation, actually, you reach a lot of goals. I'm, I'm in very important goals, right? With music. I guess so. I'm just, but I've never considered myself a super specifically like goal oriented mm -hmm. person. I mean, if I have goals, they're m broader. They're more about, you know, hopefully, you know, being really fulfilled and, and having projects that are yeah, interesting. Sure. But that's just be that's just because I get bored <laughs> really <laughs> okay. quickly and and just want to try the next thing and 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 when I feel like I'm getting comfortable, I usually get scared and I want to mm -hmm. try a different thing and I want to take a different turn. So actually, music means a lot to you for yeah. your life. It's a way of expressing yourself. It's a way of expressing myself. It's also a way of challenging myself. Sure. You know, it's a it's something that I have had all my life, um, and sometimes I feel like I haven't had the moment that some people talk about where I sure. know that I was you know I knew I was going to be a musician I think I've just kind of kept doing it and kept trying to find new things to do with it because it's just something I love and it's in my body and it's in my in my bones and and it's just it's something I do it's something I speak mm -hmm. so it's how many different things can I say with it okay perfect we switch to the second question sure. my second question is um, you're a composer as well. Yes. So when you compose your own music, what is the effect you're looking for? I'm usually going for. Um, well, first of all, it's a, that's a scary question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I'm sorry. no, no, don't, don't apologize. Don't apologize. But um, it's a scary question because I think as a composer, uh, we're as any creator actually. Because I was just working with the dan a choreographer like last week, and we talked about this too. You're. It's scary to feel like you're trying to 
create a specific reaction from the audience because one of the great joys of what we do as musicians and com creators and uh, creative people who make things for audiences is that you don't know how audiences will react. I think that between your intentions and the audience's reaction there's this really dangerous and interesting and, and beautiful space where the audience can kind of interpret it how they want mm -hmm. and find whatever truth is in there okay. um, and hopefully it aligns with yours. That being said, in my music the things I'm interested in tend to be like relationships and s mm -hmm. the social side of music making. Mm -hmm. I love being on stage. I love being on stage with people. Um, I like yesterday I gave a recital and it was mm -hmm. it was only me on stage. So in, in a situation like that, the communication is a little more between mm -hmm. me and the piano, me and the music, and me and the audience. But when I'm on stage with other people, it's about us. It's about the communication between musicians mm -hmm. and. And when you are with other musicians, you have to listen very actively to one another. So I try to write music that's about that. I like sure. writing music that's where it's in some ways it's so challenging, perhaps, mm -hmm. that everyone has to listen really hard and be very present with one another. I like creating the conditions of that alertness. Mm. Okay. Um, I feel like I feel like that's just what I find so moving mm -hmm. and emotional actually about making music is, is that you are sharing it with people. Yeah, sure. It's a human thing. So that's usually what I'm thinking about. And musically that means a lot of different things, mm -hmm. but that's often the core okay. is trying to create that kind of a response. And then in an audience, hopefully <coughs> they sense that we're involved and invested and have a human, um, uh, have I don't know have some sort of relationship to one another on stage and hopefully okay. the audience can sense that and this way of perceiving music also influence somehow the choice of music you you play because actually you play yes. very like well-known artists like Beethoven Stravinsky and so right, on right 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 and and I like mixing things mm. and I like juxtaposing things okay. like one like in a work from like yesterday mm -hmm. uh, the, I started with a work written in 2016 mm -hmm. a work that I commissioned uh, from the Brazilian uh, Brazilian composer Felipe Lara, mm -hmm. and then immediately after uh, Mozart Prelude and Fugue from mm -hmm. the late 1700s. So you have like s almost two, 250 years or so mm -hmm. separating these works, but I like putting them next to each other because that's how I hear. That's my sure. relationship to music, and of course, different kinds of music and different time periods of music are different, but. <coughs> But still, like it's a, it's dialogue. I mean, this mm -hmm. is a where no, no one exists in a vacuum. You are existing mm -hmm. within a history, and so it's it's fun to try to just bring these things a little not together, but mm -hmm. just to highlight both of them, and then to sort of imply the relationships between them. Amazing. So, uh, why don't we stay in this concept of sure. dialogue and communication? And I'm but I'm switching a little bit. Sure. Uh, how do you communicate with your Chinese origins? I right. mean, uh, my specific question is how, um, how your Chinese origins contribute or in influence somehow your life and music? I think the closest thing in my life to what I would consider like a Chinese origin, I mean, I was born in the States and I, sure. and I actually, truth be told, don't, don't feel particularly American either. Mm -hmm. I just kind of, because as a musician, you're traveling all around and you're everywhere which is amazing though it's lovely um, it's one of the great privileges of mm. doing this but um, I think that certainly uh, the importance of family is a is a aspect of my Chinese heritage and culture that I value a lot mm. um, and I I don't know I've been very lucky my family has been incredibly supportive in my life and I I couldn't be more grateful. My my parents are very humble people in the best way, which I think is mm -hmm. that my parents are actually quite confident in what they know and what they're good at and, yeah. and what they're familiar with. And so that allows them to be much more open to what they don't know and, okay. and much more curious about what they don't know. And that isn't necessarily just a Chinese thing, but the sense of family closeness and family responsibility mm -hmm. um, is something that I think has really stuck with me and then beyond that it's it's a part of my life it's it's who sure. I am and so you know it's just keeping that part of me, honoring that part of me and just remembering yeah, sure. that there's a cultural practice 
Mm-hmm. So it's just simple things, you know. Yeah. I mean, we're uh, it's the new year, mm-hmm. and so you know, I'm I'm wearing I'm I'm a dog. It's my year. Oh really? Actually, yes, because I'm turning <laughs> I'm turning 24 this year. So I've got you know my jade and. I'm wearing red, and you know it's just little. I like that's the part of cultures that uh, cultural practice where you just you're doing things. Yeah. You're, it's just a ritual, yeah. and there's something really beautiful about that, mm-hmm. and it's a wonderful culture to be a part of. Yeah, sure. So thank you so much again for being here with us. Uh, I hope you'll have the chance to follow our celebration today. Yes, I hope so. And. Uh, Thank you guys for being here today. It was amazing to have you here for the whole week and we're waiting for, for you for to follow our celebration. So thank you so much and bye. <laughs>